Hello again everyone, this is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Wednesday, June 24th. We're going to take a look at the market action of the last two days. Our indices, indicators, we're going to look at the international uh, global indices, Germany, Russia, India, China. Four stocks tonight, Federal Express, Goldman Sachs, Lennar, and Netflix. All right, we're going to start off here with the Dow was down 178 points today, it closed almost on its low, it continued, it kept trying to rally a little bit, and then it would sell off, tried to rally a little bit, sold off, and, and so here we are, so low, closed below the trading range of the last three days. So now, let's see, what is this day, the 19th, so that's last Friday, so we are down for the week from the close last Friday. Uh, on the Dow and we're back closing below the 10. If my wave count, let me get rid of the crosshairs. If my wave count is correct, a minute wave one down, minute wave two back, then we would be doing minute wave three down. And if that's the case, three is usually a fairly strong uh, wave of the five waves. Usually wave three is the strongest. So this may really get going uh, and get ahead of steam going here. Uh, if we've got the wave count right. So we will find out here very shortly. S&P 500, same thing. Uh, similar type scenario. Um, closed below the low the last three days. Take a look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ is a little bit different scenario. And actually I saw this uh, earlier. I think it was yesterday or today. I can't remember which. The potential ascending triangle here and broke out of this, you know, last Thursday. Uh, we're pulling back now. We'll see whether this holds or whether it fails. Uh, and, uh, you know, if it holds in here and turns around, then, you know, we can, I can make it easily make a projection out of it, but I'm going to wait to see what it does. Let me take a look at the um, not really getting divergence, although with this breakout, we didn't get super high. We didn't get overbought. But, uh, and the blue line, okay, this looks like it pushed a little higher on its move, and but definitely not on the demand index. So the demand index did not confirm that move there. Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that. All right, so because of that, we're, of the uh, international indices tonight, I'm going to jump right into the German DAX. Now, I still think this is doing some kind of corrective action in here. Here's a trend line that it hasn't broken. As a matter of fact, yesterday it came right up to it. And then today we pulled back down out of it. And I think the news was, you know, Germany was sounding not optimistic about, you know, the Greece situation. But, you know, depending on what, what day, what time of day, you know, the news seems to be fluctuating all over the place. But the short-term trend, well, it's pulled back a little bit. The intermediate trend is still down. Long-term trend naturally is still up. Uh, you know, if it breaks above this trend line, then we got to sit back and say, well, okay, well, maybe something else is going on. Russia, uh, of course, we talked about this trend line that's been broken. It does look like it's rolling back over to the right here. So it could be getting ready to, uh, to pull back down again. Uh, you could draw another trend line across the lows right here. And, of course, if it were to break that, then that would be a strong indication that it's resuming its downward trend. Let's take a look at India, the Nifty 50. Uh, this looks like maybe the corrective uh, wave, like maybe four has completed itself by the way it's it's breaking out of this uh, channel in here in this downward trend line. A lot of times corrective action gets contained in something like this. So um, I kind of like this, although the wave count in here is really somewhat unclear to me. Uh, but this move breaking out, now if it were to get above this point here, above this high, then I would feel a little more confident in saying that that's what's going on. But right now, uh, I'm leaning that way that says, okay, maybe intermediate wave five is starting or has started. And then the last one, eh, maybe I didn't, what happened to it? Here we go, Shanghai Composite. Now this one is one that I feel like I've really been in sync on. And so I really feel like, okay, the intermediate wave three has completed up here. And I talked about how we could pull down to this uh, trend line. I had this drawn uh, a week, uh, at least a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. 
and talked about how potentially this pullback could go to the bottom of, of wave four, uh, minor wave four of this previous wave. And sure enough, it's almost done that, not quite done it. And then we get this big bounce up here. So the real question is, is this enough of a correction? Or are we bouncing and pulling back up and then coming back down again? That's what I would lean to. I would lean to more of a, a zig, clear zigzag. And so maybe we bounce back up to like 4,800 and then roll back down again and maybe come back down all the way to 4,100. Uh, so we'll see if that's how it plays out in the Shanghai. It sure, the wave structure sure has been clear. And it's not surprising that that would happen given that um, a lot of emotion, a lot of mass participation uh, in the uh, in the market. So the the um, you know uh, mass psychology is being played out and being reflected in the waves, and the wave count is nice and clear. Okay, so that is uh, China. All right, let's take a look at our indicator, short-term trading index. Uh, where are well, it's right there. It's right on it. Okay, so the basically we're not getting any, any new signal in here. The 10-day is at 1.16, so we're right in the middle. And the Chicago uh, vol market vol CBOE volatility index, nice move today, but that's what you expect when the market's uh, down 170 points. So you get this big move, and it closed near its high. Uh, and uh, so we'll see whether we can – now, I would have liked to have seen it close above say the high of the last two days or so but uh, we'll see whether or not you know if if you're going to get a signal anyway let's put it this way if you're going to get a signal that this thing is taking off that's what i'd like to see and it hasn't done that yet so we'll see what tomorrow holds and then the uh, last one here is um well the high low index pull back down naturally the uh, 28 more new highs than new lows today so we do it was a negative uh, but it's kind of pulled back down more in the neutral, you know, neutral area. And then the last indicator of some kind that I'm looking at is the uh, high yield bond fund. And I wonder if I close that out. Well, I don't see it. Let me pull it up. Okay. So this this rolled back over with the price action today too. Let me make sure I got the light that that is. Yes, this is today. Uh, so again, you know, it's been we've talked about this many many times about how it's trending down and trending. And the bigger picture is is definitely trending and not confirming what was going on in the market. So it gets, it's pushing down, and then we had this pullback, and now it looks like it's rolling back over and a close below the ten. Uh, it looks to be like it wants to come back down again. Uh, Okay, so that is that's it on the indicators tonight. Let's start off and take a look at our four stocks. We're going to start off with uh, Federal Express, which I have not looked at before until I pulled it up tonight. And this is definitely short term. It's you know pulling back down sharp. The transportation average again is pushing down uh, and uh, selling off. And um, the airline stocks have all gotten hit. And, of course, the, all of them are getting hit, rails, everything. So Federal Express is no exception. What I'm seeing here is, let me pull back a little bit. Okay, so if I draw a trend line uh, and actually take this trend line back to that whole 2008 bottom down here, okay, to 2009, you take this trend line. It, it broke it a little bit in here, but it was really getting support, okay? And so now what I'm watching is to see, okay, does it pull back down to it again here? And notice that we also have this horizontal support area that could come into play down here. And a couple other trend lines. This short-term trend line right here between this point and this point was broken a couple of days ago, okay? And then today it pulled right down to this trend line that's right here uh, that stems from October, the October low. So I think it's kind of interesting because, again, what you're doing is you watch to see, you know, trend lines and do the trend lines hold? Do they break? You know, what's what's happening? And this is telling me that, you know, short term it's breaking down. Is it going to break down intermediate? Is it going to come down and test this long term uh, trend line? So right now that's the watch we've got on uh, on Federal Express. And... Uh, the next one we're going to take a look at is Goldman Sachs. 
today. And Goldman Sachs was down uh, 3.97 today, but again, it's closed to $214.43. So percentage-wise, not a huge move. Uh, it's pulled back down, closed below, we'll blow it up a little bit. It looks like it closed below the low of the last two days. Yes, it did. But again, it's still above the 10-day uh, 10, 10 exponential moving average. It's been just trending, just riding and riding and riding. Now, I think we might be getting a little bit of, we are, a divergence. You know, a little bit of bearish divergence coming in. But again, you've got to wait for price action to confirm the move. And here you're seeing it on the demand index. Uh, and same thing on DI+. Plus. So you're starting to get bearish divergence showing up in all three of my indicators, which makes me think that there's a good chance this is going to start to roll over. But again, you don't bet on it because you want to wait till the price starts to tell you that that's what it's doing. The um, ADX is at 31, so it's definitely trending. I mean, that's telling you it's trending, but you don't need the ADX to tell you it's trending. All you got to do is look at the chart. Okay, so we're kind of on reversal watch on Goldman Sachs. The next one is Lennar, which uh, their earnings came out today. And apparently they, you know, they beat on earnings, uh, but I read somewhere they were a little cautious on their outlook. Uh, which is probably why, I mean, this thing gapped up huge today and then just sold off most of the day. Uh, but still, you know, big gap and uh, big bullish looking bar. The thing that's got my caution is let me let's step back for a minute and let's look at the trading on, on uh, Lennar. OK, so here's here's all the trading since 1999. So you can see that when this thing breaks a trend line, sometimes it'll come and pull right back to it like it did in the beginning of 2006 then it starts to roll over like a lot of stocks do. Now, this trend line from 2008, the low in 2008, was broken back here in August 2014, in August last year. But then we pull back up to it, and then we just kind of, but we're underneath the trend line, okay? We're underneath it. Um, so that, you know, I'm a little wary about that situation. And the fact that these kind of waves, like you might say, well, gosh, this, this looks like it's chopping higher. And it's, you know, it's looking good. We pull back. We're moving again. This is not a first impulsive wave, okay? This is a three-wave move. Three-wave moves are not first moves in, in, in impulse moves higher, okay? So this tells me that corrective action is still going on. So this makes me believe that what this is is something like you know, correcting A, B, C kind of thing in here. So I think there's some kind of corrective action going on. We'll just have to watch and see uh, where this pushes up to. Of course, you got this previous high. The fact that it's down below this trend line gives me pause. So we're just going to have to watch. And uh, I don't have any other specific wave count on it. I have not uh, uh, been following it, but we'll have to take a look at it. So right now, I guess my message or my take on Lennar is that it looks like it's doing some kind of corrective action. It could be chopping sideways as a part of this process. We'll see whether this move holds or whether this closes on this gap. Okay, and then the last one we're going to take a look at tonight is Netflix. And the news on Netflix today was that uh, what uh, Carl Icahn, I think it was, uh, has exited his position on Netflix, made a nice profit on Netflix. And uh, the stock sold off most of the day today, gapped up big and then sold off. Netflix is in the process of doing a seven to one stock split. So this kind of reminds me a lot of Apple. The fact that Apple did its split was up around 700 and then split seven for one. So this is kind of interesting. I still think, I think we're in a fifth primary move up. Let's, let's zoom back out of here. Okay, so here's all the trading I've got since 2002. And, and, uh, I think we've got from this low point in here, I think we're working five waves, five major waves. And actually, it may be uh, the, the, the fifth wave cycle, you know, the fifth, fifth uh, overall cycle wave. And I'm counting a one, two here, a strong three uh, that lays out. And this is very typical of the three kind of vertical type action that you're getting. You get this pullback to the previous fourth wave, intermediate wave here. And then we take off again. I don't think that five waves are complete here. And uh, uh, the main reason is when I do a Fibonacci projection of one and two and project out where I think three is topping out, this is right where I expect three to top out. So 
either this is the top of it and we're getting ready to do a corrective uh, a fourth wave down and then I expect another fifth wave or this peaked out right here and this is a part of the correction that's already started. It's really hard to tell. This isn't very much of a fourth wave correction in terms of correcting this third wave in here. Okay, so that's the only thing that gives me a little caution. But I guess what I'm thinking, what I'm seeing is I'm looking for a fourth wave to correct back down and then get one more push up on Netflix. So um, we'll see how that plays out. And of course, this, you know, it's outside the Keltner channel up here. Let's take a look at the indicators real quick. The demand index is showing uh, bearish divergence. Uh, DI plus is showing bearish divergence. Well, I guess let me look at the yeah, it is bearish divergence because these price close, even the close today and here yesterday, they're higher than this point back over here. And then the last one we'll take a look at is the, um, is the RSI and it's showing bearish divergence in here, too. So my expectation is some kind of correction on Netflix and then one more push. All right, that's it for tonight. And uh, everyone, oh, I wanted to make sure you're all aware I do have another uh, page, a uh, education video page I've put on my website. Uh, I've got the uh, five courses that I've got available out there. Uh, we had a launch of the main course uh, back the 1st of May uh, to kind of a VIP list that I had. And now I'm making this available to the public. So, you know, go over and check it out. I think there's some really good stuff. And uh, I'd love to know what you think. And that, again, is the uh, educational courses uh, on my webpage at joehenches.net. So, and let's see. I think that's it for tonight. We'll be back on Saturday with the weekend update. Everyone have a great Thursday, Friday.